by Weird Al Yankovic. Way back, when I was just a little bitty boy, living in a box under the stairs, in the corner of the basement of the house half a block down the street from Jerry's Bait Shop. You know the place. Well, anyway, back then, life was going swell, and everything was just peachy. Except, of course, for the undeniable fact that every single morning, my mother would make me a big old bowl of sauerkraut for breakfast. <laughs> big bowl of sauerkraut. Every single morning. <laughs> it was driving me crazy. I said to my mom. I said, hey mom, what's up with all the sauerkraut? And my dear sweet mother. She just looked at me like a cow looks at an oncoming trick. Moo. <laughs> and she leaned her down right down next to me. And she said, it's good for you. <laughs> and then she tied me to the wall and stuck a funnel in my mouth. <laughs> and force fed me. Nothing, Nothing but sauerkraut until I was 23, 23 and a half years old. <laughs> That's when I swore that someday, someday, I would get out of that basement and travel to a magical, faraway place where the sun is always shining. And the air smells like warm root beer. And the towels are oh so fluffy. Where the shriners and lepers play their ukuleles all day long. And anyone on the street will gladly shave your back for a nickel. Well, let, let me tell you, people, it wasn't long before my dream came true. Because the very next day, a local radio station had this contest. To see who could correctly guess the number of molecules in Santa's beard. I was off by three, but I still won the grand prize. That's right, a first class, one way ticket to Albuquerque. You know, I've never been on a real airplane before, and I gotta tell you, it was really great, except for the fact I had to sit between two large women with excruciatingly severe body odor. <laughs> and the little kid in back of me kept throwing up the whole time. The flight attendants ran out of Dr. P and salt the peanuts. And the in-flight movie was Dora and the Big Red Bunny. <laughs> and oh yeah, three of the airplane engines burned out. And we went into a tailspin. And crashed into a hillside. And the plane exploded in a giant fireball. <laughs> And everybody died. Except, Except for me. me. You know why? Because I had my tray table up and my seat back in the full upright, upright position. <laughs> so I crawled from the twisted burning wreckage. I crawled on my hands and knees for three full days. Dragging along my big leather suitcase. And my garment bag. And my tenor saxophone. And my 12 pound bowling ball. And my lucky, lucky autograph glow in the dark snorkel. But finally, I arrived at the world-famous Albuquerque Holiday Inn, where the towels are oh so fluffy, and you can eat your soup right out of the ashtray if you wanna. <laughs> it's okay. They're clean. Well, I checked into, into my room, and I turned down the AC, and I turned on the telemundo, and I'm just about to eat that little chocolate mint on my pillow that I love so very, very much, when suddenly, there's, there's a knock on my door. door. Well, now who could that be? I say, who is it? No answer. Who is it? There's no answer. Who is it? They're not saying anything. So finally, I go over and I open the door. And just as I suspected, it's some big fat dude with a flock of seagulls haircut and, and only, only one, one nostril. <laughs> so anyway, he bursts into my room and grabs my lucky snorkel. And I'm like, hey, you can't have that. That snorkel's just been like a snorkel to me. And he's like, tough. And I'm like, give it. And he's like, make me. And I'm like, okay. So I grab his leg. And he grabbed my esophagus. And I bit off his ear. <laughs> and he chewed off my eyebrows. And I took out his appendix. And he gave me atomic wedgie. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. indeed. You You'd better believe it. Well, to cut a long story short, he got away with my snorkel. <laughs> but I made a solemn vow right then and there. That I would not rest. And I would not sleep for an instant until that one nostril man was brought to justice. But first, I decided, I decided to buy some donuts. So I got in my car and I jumped in the donut shop. <laughs> and I walked up to the guy behind the counter. And he says, Yeah, what do you want? I said, You got any glazed donuts? He said, Nah, we're out of glazed donuts. I said, Well, you got any jelly donuts? He said, 
Nah, we're out of jelly donuts. I said, you got any barbarian cream filled donuts? He said, nah, we're out of barbarian cream filled donuts. I said, you got any cinnamon rolls? He said, nah, we're out of cinnamon rolls. I said, you got any apple fritters? He said, nah, we're out of apple fritters. I said, you got any bear claws? He said, Wait a minute. I'll go check. <laughs> now nah, we're out of bear claws. I said, well, in that case, in that case, what do you have? <laughs> he says, all I got right now is this box of one dozen starving crazed weasels. I said, okay, okay I'll take that. that. So he hands me the box, and I open the lid, and the weasels jump out, and they immediately latch on my face and start biting me all over. <laughs> Oh man, they were just going nuts. They were tearing me apart. You know, I think that it was just about that time that a little ditty started going through my head. I believe it went a little something like this. Ah! Get them off me! Get them off me! Get them off me! Oh! Get them off! Get them off! Get them off! Oh! Oh! I ran out in the street with these flesh-eating weasels all over my face. Waving my arms all around. And I'm just running, running, and running, running. Like, like a constipated wiener dog. dog. And as <laughs> luck would have it, that's exactly when I ran into the girl of my dreams. Her name was Zelda. She was an ostrich enthusiast with a slight overbite. And her hair was the color of strained peaches. I'll never forget the first thing she said to me. She said, hey, you've got weasels on your face. <laughs> that's, that's when I knew it was true love. <laughs> we were inseparable after that. We ate together. We bathed together. We even shared the same piece of mint-flavored dental floss. The world was our burrito. So we got married and we bought us a house. And had two beautiful children. From Gui Gui and Superfly. <laughs> we, oh, we were so very, very, very happy. But then one fateful night, Zelda said to me, she said, Sweetie Pumpkin, do you want to join the Columbia Record Club? I said, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on now, baby. I'm just not ready for that kind of commitment. So we broke up and I never saw her again. But that's just the way things go. In, In Albuquerque. <laughs> anyway, things really started looking up for me. Because about a week later, I finally achieved my lifelong goal. That's right. I got me a part-time job. At, at the, the Sizzlers. Sizzlers. <laughs> I even made employee of the month after I put out a grease fire with my face. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody was pretty jealous of me after that. I was getting a lot of attitude. Say, that reminds me of an amusing incident. This guy comes up to me on the street. And he tells me that he hasn't had a bite in three days. Well, well I, I knew what he meant. But just to be funny, I took a big bite out of his jugular vein. And he's yelling and screaming. And bleeding all over. And I'm like, hey, come on, don't you get it? But he just kept rolling around on the sidewalk. Bleeding and screaming. You know, just completely missing the irony of the whole situation. Man, some people just can't take a joke, you know? Anyway, um, um, where was I? I kind of lost my train of thought. Ah, uh, well, uh, okay. Anyway, I... I know it's kind of a roundabout way of saying it, but I guess the whole point I'm trying to make here is I, I hate sauerkraut. sauerkraut. <laughs>